When we talk about the immune system, we also have to talk about the lymphatic system because lymphocytes, part of the lymphatic system, are the white blood cells that protect your body. So we'll talk about uh, your body's responses to um, assaults on it from outside, whether it's an injury or an, or an illness. The lymphatic system is a very important part of the immune system. It is this network of, of vessels that, with lymph nodes, and it carries fluid called lymph, which is basically tissue fluid that seeps out of blood vessels and is found in between cells called interstitial fluid, and it collects back into the lymphatic system, which then eventually empties it back into the circulatory system, into the blood plasma. Um, and then the lymphatic system also has these lymph nodes which have macrophages and other and lymphocytes and other um, kinds of cells that can fight and kill um, infectious agents that may be in your body. The lymph nodes help filter out some of those agents from the from the fluid and then the, the macrophages and uh, lymphocytes that are present there in the in the uh, lymph nodes can help destroy them. So the two main functions of the lymphatic system are to return the tissue fluid back to the blood and to help fight infection. Organs associated with the lymphatic system include the ones listed here, the bone marrow, tonsils, thymus, spleen, appendix. Um, they perform different functions within the system, and we'll talk more about systems later on, but right, this is just the lymphatic system in general. Now the immune system fights infection in a couple of different ways. Okay, there are th basically three lines of defense. Uh, you have two lines of nonspecific defense mechanisms. The first line of defense, of course, is your skin and mucous membranes and the secretions from both of those. Um, that, that presents a barrier to prevent things entering your body unwanted. Sometimes things get through, whether you have an injury or whether you inhale something or swallow something. Okay, And the second line of defense is also nonspecific. It doesn't matter what the agent is. The same kind of response happens regardless. And that includes phagocytic white cells and the antimicrobial proteins that uh, that actually that actually work against um, things invading your cells, as well as the inflammatory response. And then the third line of defense is the specific immunity, the specific defense mechanisms that involves lymphocytes and antibodies that can help fight uh, infections in the body. Now your nonspecific immunity once again includes the skin, mucous membranes, glands, your stomach acid, even the hairs in your nose, all those kind of things that can help filter out or break down things before they have a chance to um, to get a foothold in your body. There are specialized phagocytic cells called macrophages or phagocytes that eat the foreign materials that might get through into your body. They also eat damaged or infected cells to protect to prevent the, the infection from going any further. There are also chemicals called interferons that are produced by uh, virus infected cells and those interferons can help protect adjacent or nearby cells from getting infected by the virus. So that's a nonspecific thing also. And then there are a series of um, chemicals that can be released by cells. This is called the complement cascade and this is a group of proteins that can break down invaders and trigger that inflammatory response and we'll talk a little bit more about that with the inflammatory response. So the inflammatory response is what happens when you have some kind of assault on your body. So that's going to be like an injury or or uh, a cut or scrape or something like that. So here we have in the picture a pin puncturing the skin. Anytime you puncture the skin, you're going to take a chance on introducing bacteria underneath the skin, and that's where it can cause harm. On the surface of your skin, you're protected by the skin itself and by secretions and by beneficial bacteria on the surface, but when you puncture it, those things can get in. That's why when you go to the doctor and get a shot, they always clean your arm first with alcohol to kind of just sterilize that area, more not sterilize it, but, but um, disinfect the area so that when they inject the needle in there, it's not injecting some bacteria under your skin as well. So this, in this case you have an accidental pricking here. Okay, the damaged cells and the cells that are, that are being touched by the bacteria that have been, ins that have been inserted into the, under the skin are going to signal, are going to stimulate the production of these signaling molecules, things like histamine, which is going to re elicit a response from, from the tissues. It's going to cause the blood vessels nearby to uh, become uh, dilated, 
get a little bit larger and, and become much more leaky. And they're going to they're going to kind of not really swell, but they're going to dilate. It's going to open up space between them. Some of the fluid is going to leak out of there. Some of the cells are going to some of the white blood cells are going to slip out to be in between cells of the of the connective tissue that make up the the vessels, and they're going to migrate into the area around the uh, injury. Notice in the second picture here, you've got some swelling occurring because of the fluid that's been, that's collecting there. You've got the phagocytes that are moving into the area. Phagocytes are going to start trying to eat up the bacteria and destroy the, uh, the, the damaged cells and those that have already gotten bacteria in them. Um, and then uh, over time, you're going to get a blood clot that forms that will stop, stop the bleeding that might have occurred there and may, may cause a, a scab to form to help protect um, from further uh, infection. And then um, once the... Um, once the cells have consumed everything they can consume, sometimes the cells die and they just collect there and you have that, in, that adds to the fluid that can create the swelling. But you have a series of reactions. You have swelling, you have heat, you have pain, um, and, all, and you have redness. And all of those are a result of the inflammatory response. And they're all things that can help uh, prevent bacteria from, getting an effect, yeah, from causing an infection there. Uh, specific immunity, on the other hand, involves the production of antibodies. Antibodies are special proteins that can help uh, bind to specific antigens. An antigen, the meaning of the word, comes from antibody generating substances. And this is any kind of foreign molecule or protein um, that can cause the body to make antibodies against it. This includes viruses, bacteria, protista fungi, spores, pollen, any other kinds of things that can cause problems for you. And the antibodies are going to attach to a specific antigen, the one that fits exactly on them, and they're going to help destroy the effect of the antigen on your body. Uh, the antibodies are Y-shaped molecules like that. We're not going to worry too much about the components of it. Just know that it's a Y-shaped molecule and they have an antigen binding site that is very specific to place on the antigen that has caused the production of the antibody. Um, the things that happen when the antibodies bind, bind to the antigens, they can block the virus binding sites. The virus has a specific site that it has to use to bind to, uh, to, bind to a cell in order to inject its DNA into the cell. And if you, if you block that from, from attaching to the cell, then that's going to prevent it from getting infected. They can also be used to coat bacteria, cause the bacteria to stick together. They're going to make dissolved antigens actually precipitate out of solution so that the clumps of microbes and the clumps of the, of the foreign proteins can actually be uh, um, more easily engulfed by or uh, eaten by the, the macrophage or the other phagocytic cells. This just shows you a picture of some of these things. So we have neutralization of the virus and the bacteria here. We have the bacteria clumping together to make a bigger clump. You have the dissolved antigens that are being, that are being precipitated out of solution. And all of these things make phagocytosis by the macrophage much easier. In addition to that, the binding of antibodies to the antigens inactivates them by activating that complement system, which can then uh, cause the cell, the foreign cell, to lice or rupture. And that's going to destroy that cell before it has a chance to do you any harm. Important cells and agents involved in this response are leukocytes. These are white blood cells. You'll see them called leukocytes or lymphocytes. <coughs> There are a number of different kinds of white blood cells, but in terms of, anti in terms of the immune system, we're going to talk about two main kinds, and that's the B cells and the T cells. B cells are produced in the bone marrow. They're the cells that produce the antibodies. And the antibodies, of course, then help kill or, or inactivate the bacteria and viruses. Some of the B cells produce antibodies. Other B cells become memory cells. And the memory cells actually hang around in your system for a period of time, remembering that antigen. And when they come in contact with that antigen, again, when you're exposed to that, uh, that disease again, or uh, some, the same thing gets injected into you again, they immediately start producing plasma cells, which can make lots and lots of antibodies. And then they can also stimulate uh, the, the other kind of activity uh, to, make more at, to make more memory cells for the next time this might happen.
The T cells are produced in the thymus gland, which is a gland about where your breastbone is in your chest. And that makes two main kinds of T cells called helper T cells and cytotoxic or killer T cells. The helper T cells are activators. They activate the cytotoxic T cells and they also can activate the uh, B cells to produce antibodies. The cytotoxic T cells are also called killer T cells and they actually attack and perforate infected body cells to kill them before the infection has a chance to get a hold in, in the bacteria or whatever the infectious agent is have a chance to, um, to replicate even further. So you, there's a diagram that I gave you that, has, that shows humoral immunity and cell immediated immunity. Okay, and so these are the, basically the steps in that diagram and we'll look at the diagram on the next page. The um, antigen is engulfed by the macrophage. Macrophages, again, once are, are phagocytic cells that are staying in your tissues. And once, once that antigen, whatever it is, is, is eaten by the macrophage, some of the proteins of that antigen are actually pushed to the surface of the macrophage and it kind of like badges to identify it as being one that, is, that has been activated by this particular antigen. Those antigens as well as free antigens in the, in the uh, bloodstream or in the uh, tissue fluid can, sti can stimulate the helper T cells. Uh, so the t helper T cells, once they're stimulated by the macrophage or the free antigens, are going to stimulate B cells to start producing antibodies, and they're also going to stimulate T cells, to, the killer T cells or the cytotoxic T cells, to start breaking down the infected cells. The B cells uh, start dividing to produce lots and lots of plasma cells, which produce the antibodies, and the antibodies bind to specific antigens that are complementary in shape. Okay. This part, the B cells producing the antibodies, the antibodies inactivating the, the antigens, this is called humoral immunity. There's also cell-mediated immunity, which involves those killer T cells. So here we have, this is a primary immune response. You have B cells with the different antigen receptors on them. The antigen molecules will bind with this particular one. That stimulates the production of many copies of those B cells. So they immediately start dividing rapidly. Once they start dividing rapidly, some of them become plasma cells. The plasma cells, if you see in here, these little lines that those represent lots of rough ER. The rough ER is the site of protein production and the antibodies are proteins. And so these plasma cells are busily making lots and lots and lots of the, of the antibodies, which can then travel throughout your bloodstream and find that antigen wherever it is and attach to it and help deactivate it. Some of these the cloned uh, B cells will become memory cells and they will hang around in your system for a period of time until you come in contact with that same antigen again, in which case that will stimulate the production of more uh, plasma cells to make more antibodies and more memory cells to last longer. The memory cells, when you, when you, are, um, when you come in contact with that um, antigen again, they're going to immediately start producing even more plasma cells with more antibodies being made and then you've got more memory cells being made. So every time you're exposed to it, you increase the amount of antibodies that are present in your blood and you increase the number of memory cells that are in there and that way it, you can react to it more quickly each time you come in contact with that, with that organism or that agent. Those memory cells remember the antigens and start producing the antibodies immediately, much more quickly than they could the first time. This is how vaccines work. Vaccines are made from a weakened or dead organisms or some of the molecules from those organisms. And once you introduce those, introduce those into your body, they stimulate the production of antibodies and memory cells to help prevent reoccurrence of that disease. And that's why you have to get boosters sometimes for some of these vaccines so that you increase the amount of antibody in your blood. Here we have a graph that shows the antibody uh, concentration increasing when you're when you are exposed to a, an antigen this particular one we're going to call X okay and it can increase it produces antibodies to that X and over a period of time this shows the time in days okay they're going to start declining in number because by this time they're going to have taken care of the infection they'll still be a little bit there and but if you get exposed to this, the antigen X again, at this time, what it's going to do is stimulate even greater production, the secondary immune response, even greater produ production of antibodies and memory cells, and that level is going to stay much higher for much longer. Same thing will happen with the second, with the second um, antigen that you're exposed to. Okay, if you're exposed to both things at the same time, look how much faster this responded than it did here. 
This is why you have to get, again, this is why you have to get boosters for vaccines because what that does is you have a small amount of memory cells and each time you get a booster, it increases the number of memory cells and the amount of antibody that's available in your blood to give you longer lasting protection. So in the cell-mediated immunity, those antigens, once they're engulfed by the macrophages, okay, they display the antigens on the surface and they stimulate the helper T cells. The helper T cells, in addition to stimulating the, the memory B cells, they're going to stimulate the killer T cells or give rise to memory T cells to, that will eventually produce active killer T cells. And those active cells will destroy infected cells or cancer cells. They, they in, um, inject a chemical called perforin, which actually perforates the cell membrane of the infected cell, so the cells rupture. They, destroy the, they also destroy the macrophage that has that antigen on it to make sure that it doesn't uh, contribute to the infective agents. So here we have a cytotoxic T cell binding to that infected cell here. You see that perforin molecules, uh, that's the chemical that's produced there, uh, will make holes in the, in the cell membrane and they're going to promote apot, apot, apoptosis which is how that's normally pronounced, okay? And that's going to cause holes to form in those cells, and then that's going to destroy the infected cell. Now, to, to compare the humoral and cell-mediated immunity, remember you have B cells the humoral, in the humoral response that make antibodies, the antibodies that attach to antigens in the body fluid. The cell-mediated response produces T cells that are going to attach to the infected body cell, and they're going to cause that, they're going to, cause the production of those killer T cells that can that can destroy the infected cells. You can also have disorders of the immune system and this includes things like allergies. Okay, Allergies are an inflammatory response to some kind of environmental antigen. It probably is something that really should not be harmful to you but your body for some reason perceives it to be so and so you have a response. Some people have these responses, these abnormal responses, and other people do not. And this is why you have those, those histamine type reactions that cause you know, itchy, watery eyes and sneezing and things like that in response to the, to allergic, to the antigen, the allergic antigen. There are also autoimmune diseases. This is when your body fails to distinguish self from non-self. Uh, some of your own tissues and some of your own cells are perceived by your immune system to be foreign and your immune system will start attacking this. This includes things like lupus, insulin dependent diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis and there are several others as well. Um, and this is something that's, that's no, nobody really, I don't think really understands why this happens sometimes and a lot of research is being done to try to figure out ways to uh, reverse that or stop it. There are also immunodeficiency diseases um, and these immunodeficiency diseases uh, occur in individuals that don't, that are missing components of the immune system and they as a result of that have frequent and recurrent infections. There are some diseases, some types of cancer that are involved with this like Hodgkin's disease, Hodgkin's lymphoma. There's also something like HIV, human immunodeficiency virus, and this one is really bad because it attacks specifically the helper T cell. And when you have a reduced helper T cell count, that's going to slow down all of the rest of your immune responses. And so when you develop AIDS, the acquired immune immunodeficiency to syndrome, then the reason that people get sick and eventually die from AIDS is because they're respond they're they are um, succumbing to those opportunistic infections that their, that their immune system should normally be able to fight off but can't because the helper T cells have been inactivated. So this is, concludes the notes on the immune system and we'll talk more about these things in class.